In the age of AI, one of the best investments you can make is building your own skills. For me, one of the most valuable skills I learned and have saved me the most money is how to run AI models locally. In this video, I'll show you step by step how to set up a local model with no technical skills needed. I'll take you through some of the more advanced steps of connecting apps you already use to local models via MCPs. Take a look at the recent developments from two of the top AI providers. OpenAI reporting that governments can request user data and access private chats, and Anthropic changing their policy around usage data, giving them the ability to train on your conversations. Here's the reality. If you're using these providers through their free web interface, your conversations and data may be stored, analyzed, or even accessed by third parties. With local models, your data never leaves your machine. No storage on external service, no policy changes that affects your privacy, no risk of government data requests, complete control, complete privacy. Plus it's completely free. No monthly subscription fees, no pay per token usage fees, no usage limits. And since everything's locally on your machine, you can even use it without internet. No more service unavailable errors or hidden rate limits, right when you need it most. You can build entire workflows, test different prompts, and even train team members on AI processes using local models for free. Then, once you've proven your concept and redefined your approach, you can confidently scale up to more powerful cloud models, knowing exactly what works. There are over 300,000 open-sourced AI models to choose from, but recently, all of the top providers have released very powerful models. This ranges from Meta, Google, to even OpenAI. So there are some things you should know before jumping straight into local models. Running local models requires adequate hardware and bigger models need more powerful setups. You can start with just eight gigabytes of RAM for smaller models, though 16 gigabytes will give you better performance and the amount of power needed scales with the size of models. Look at Meta building a building the size of Manhattan for their data centers. You also need storage space Models can range from a few gigabytes all the way up to hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes. I'll show you how to pick the right model for your machine a bit later. You'll likely need to run less powerful models than what the cloud providers offer, unless you have a super, super high-end setup. But that's okay, local models shine for small tasks and prototyping where you can test whether your initial proof of concept will work. Now let's get you set up. We're going to be downloading LM Studios. It's the easiest way to get started with local models. LM Studio is a basically an AI control center. It handles downloading models, managing them, and gives you a clean interface to chat with them. Let's get it set up. So first we're gonna to need to head over to lmstudio.ai. Once you're in there, you need to click download, and it should be just a simple install like any other Mac application. Now we're in the app, this will be the home screen. This is where you'll manage your chats, you can talk to them, and you'll load and change models. You can also change the appearance in the top right corner, whether you prefer the dark themes or the Serpia, or just the classic or the light, which I'm going to be using. Once inside, you'll notice at the bottom corner there's these three options, user, power options, and developer. If you click the power options, it will bring up some extra options on the sidebar. So if you go over to the developer tab, we won't go too much into this section, but this is where developers can use this URL to contact their local AI models via API or any agents they build. Next, we'll head over to my models tab. This is where we'll store all the downloaded models. As you can see, I've got two models here which have been downloaded that I've used frequently. Um, we can change some of the settings and the, the context lengths, and we can get, even give it custom system prompts if we really wanted to for when the model loads up. You probably don't have any models here, so this is why we'll go into the next tab, the Discover tab. So once in the Discover tab, this mission control panel will open. This is where we can select and download models for our machine. Another handy tab is this hardware tab. This shows you what your computer is exactly capable of. This will come in handy in a minute later when we're selecting our model. So now we're in the model search, just to make sure click this tick box, otherwise you'll be suggested models that you won't be able to run on your machine. As you can see, quite a lot of companies have been open sourcing models lately. We've got Google, Minstrel, Quen, IBM, Microsoft, some of the biggest companies. Alongside you'll see how many downloads have had, how many favorites, and the size of the model. LM Studio also lets you know whether this model will run on your computer or not. Because we've got this checkbox ticks, 
most of these models in the selection would run anyway. Another thing to consider is these icons on the right hand side of the model. These will be letting you know whether they can process images or cool tools or handle reasoning efforts. So when selecting the model, it comes down to the size of the model or how fastly you want it to work. The main consideration is this B parameter. This one's 22 billion parameters. This represents the learn knowledge of the model and the parameters. But picking the biggest billion parameter is probably not the wisest move from the strat, as bigger doesn't always mean better. The bigger the model is, the more hardware you'll need and the slower it will be to reply to your response. So you need to find the middle ground to select the right model. So now we're going to download a model. I'm going to download the Quen 8 billion parameter model as it runs perfectly on my machine and it's got tool calls which will come in handy later. You head over to the model page and click download. It may take a few minutes to download but eventually I'll show you what to do next. As you can see when loading the model you can change the context length. This represents how many words and tokens we can put into the prompt. Just one thing in mind, the bigger you are, the bigger the memory consumption and it may slow your computer down or completely crash it. So I'm going to load it on the standard 5000 tokens. Now that the model is loaded we can start a new chat and speak to a local AI for the first time. So because the model had thinking mode we can toggle it on and off. For now we'll leave it on and I'll show you a demonstration of chatting to the model for the first time. Let's ask it, how do I scramble eggs? So that's how easy it is to create your own local AI environment. Now you've got a fully secure server offline that nobody can touch. Just to prove a point, I'm going to turn my Wi-Fi off and ask it another question. Right, I've asked it how I can cook bacon just to prove my Wi-Fi is fully off and the model still works. This is the power of local models, no Wi-Fi needed. So let's go for a more advanced option. Let's say we've got this highly secretive contract that we don't want online or exposed to any third party services. We can drag this into LM Studio and it will load into the search bar. We can now reference this contract in our chat completely offline, locally, so it's not exposed to any third parties. So privacy is no longer a problem if we want to chat to private documents. As you can see, we asked this agent what happens if there's an early contract termination and it's gone in and it's searched and it's summarized this section of the PDF for us completely locally. I want to show you one last more advanced example. Let's say you want to speak to some third party service like your Gmail or your CRM. You can do this by using the model context protocol feature. To do this, you'd open the sidebar and enter the settings. Then you'd click program. As you can see, we've actually been using the MCP tool already, the RAG V1. But let's say I wanted to chat to my monday.com. I can enable this MCP, which I added through the edit MCP files. All servers will have an installation guide. The majority of the time, you'll just need to paste some JSON into the MCP config. Now that it's enabled, I'm able to talk to my monday.com account through this local AI system using the model context protocol server. One thing to note, when enabling tools, it will completely blow out the context window. So that's why you have to select the ones you want to use. Otherwise, let me show you an example where I can blow out the context window. So I said, hello, create me a Monday task to change this section of the contract. Now I'll press send and you'll see what happens next. As you can see, it failed. This is the important thing to remember when you're adding tools with local AI models. Every tool eats into your context window. And as you can see at the bottom, our context is 352% full. That is the reason why this call failed. So when using tools, keep in mind that it does eat into your context window. So there you have it. Local AI gives you the privacy and control. No more big companies putting their grubby hands on your data anymore. And now you have the skills to use it. Thanks for watching and consider watching some of my other videos where I cover AI and automations, especially for business use cases.